architected the Apple Store strategy that still exists mm -hmm. today, but of course it has evolved. How do you think it has changed, you know, for the better and for the worse? Oh, I think it's gotten much better. I think Angela and the team are doing a phenomenal job. I think the stores are operating better today than they did when I was there because they continue to innovate. But it's more like Apple. Apple innovates so deeply inside things that sometimes you don't pick it up. But today they don't have a genius bar, they have a genius grove. It's like a place to, it's much more comfortable, if you will. They've got Today at Apple with all of these programs throughout the day to learn more. So the fundamental vision we had, which is to create a place to belong, they've just brought up up notch. And so I'm really proud of the team. Is it getting harder, though, because the phones are becoming more incremental? It's not about, you know, mm -hmm. these huge technological shifts happening it's these more incremental shifts and and convincing customers to upgrade even though the phone they have may be working just fine it is if you think about the hardware but the fundamental change in these phones is what happens on the inside through software and through engineering whether it's on cameras and that's the kind of thing that you have to spend time to learn how to take advantage of and that's what we do at enjoy and i can talk about that later so you know there's a big Apple event coming up, mm -hmm. another, you know, hardware unveiling, iPads, Macs, etc. Um, you know, but, but other big hardware plays like HomePod haven't mm -hmm. really panned out. Yeah. What do you think will be Apple's next big hardware thing? Will there be one? Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, <clears throat> you got to remember, these products are never overnight successes. The iPod was launched in 2001. It was for Mac only until 2004. In 2004, when it went to Windows, it became this thing you couldn't find in the stores, right? It's true with all of these Apple products, like the watch. The watch today, the, the new watch, is really a game changer. It's lead for health. And you can't even get those in the stores. They're out of stock. It's really hard to do. So you got to be patient with Apple, because they really deliver a product, refine it to make it perfect. So I don't know what's next, but I'm excited for next week's announcements. So. Uh Enjoy, you know, you've got product experts going into homes, helping with setup. You know, it, it's sort of the Best Buy model, but Best Buy is huge. How do you compete with something? Well, it's like really that? not at all like mm -hmm. Best Buy. Mm -hmm. And it's really not about an expert to the home. Mm -hmm. It's really about the next frontier for shopping. So the way I think about it, up until the early 90s, the frontier was a physical store that we went to. The Apple store in Regent Street has had, the, in London, the same landlord for a 1,000 years. We've had this 20-year time of online shopping, which is you order on a device that's delivered to your door. Amazon leads that. It's about convenience. I believe the next frontier is going through the door. So Enjoy has created an on-demand mobile retail store that we operate for partners like AT&T, Google, Sonos. So it's really bringing like the best of an Apple experience right into your home. Amazon is now doing some of these in-home services, a variety of in-home mm -hmm. services. Is that a threat? No, to because Apple? what Amazon, no, I don't think so. Amazon's very innovative. What they will do, you can order an Amazon person to come to the house and talk to you about what you might do next. And then you can order a product from Amazon, they'll ship it to you. What we do at Enjoy is we bring a mobile store. We have products you can try. You can buy on the spot, we'll set them up on the spot. It's basically everything you do in a store is now done in your living room. Would you ever want to sell to Apple? I just want to build a great company. <laughs> um, so I have to ask you about yeah. what's going on mm. in the uh, more traditional retail space, yeah. you know, with Sears going into bankruptcy, having been the CEO of JCPenney, now Sears is just trying to prevent the liquidation of its stores. Sure. Is, that just, is that a futile effort? It's, it's hard. You know, the retail world, we're overstored. And if you don't keep your model updated, it's going to get tired. You know, I'm really proud of where I used to work, Target. Target's kind of back to being Target again. They're performing well. They figured out how to use their store and their online store, make it work together. They're an example of an older retailer that stays young. Unfortunately, a lot of retailers don't evolve or adapt well. That was one of Sears' big problems, one of Penny's big problems is they're kind of stuck in that old business model. Well, and you tried to do some of these things at JCPenney's and it didn't work out so well. They Correct. now have a new CEO. Mm -hmm. You know, are they next? No, I wish, no, I, I think they've got a good enough balance sheet to have a chance to survive for quite a while. If they do and what? And I hope they do. Well, the nice thing is they've got a female CEO, first time in 110 years Amen. of that company. And I think that's a really wonderful thing. And I know the team, when I work there, they're very committed to succeeding. And so I wish them the best, but they're going to have to evolve a little bit. They've got to find a way to appeal to a younger family. 
you know, the old people like me, we don't buy that much. It's young parents like you with three kids that are going to the store and getting kids clothes and outfitting your house. So if you can't appeal to a young family, your future is going to be pretty tough.